Hey everyone, it's Carter with Integrity Lighting. And today we're gonna to hear from Brad Haynes, the National Resource Manager for Concert and Touring at Chave Professional. He's going to be demoing for us the new Maverick Silence 2 profile. Hello, my name is Brad Haynes with Chave Professional. I am the National Resource Manager for Concert and Touring, and we'd very much like to thank Integrity Lighting for allowing us to come over and be part of their new YouTube channel and present uh, one of our new fixtures. Today I'm going to present our new Maverick Silence 2 Profile fixture. As the name suggests, it's all about low noise, in fact, virtually silent. In fact, it doesn't have a fan in the color mixing or in the color engine at all. So it's perfect for those type of situations where audio quality is paramount and the fixture doesn't need to get in the way, such as house of worship, such as theater, such as a school type setting, where all audio quality matters. This is the perfect fixture. It's all of, also about the quality of light. We've taken an enormous amount of time to really develop from the ground up an LED engine uh, system that hits all of the fine points, high CRI, high TM30 scores, and really fine tunes all of those different uh, values that are important for a quality of light type of fixture. Just looking at the outside of the fixture, you can see it's a very manageable size. We wanted to create a fixture that was sort of a one-man type of operation. So one man could lift it, one man could install it, and not have to worry about a dual lift type of situation. It's also based around the Maverick system. So uh, everything that you've come to love with the Maverick style of things, from the, the tight and nice size in the LED display, to the control settings, to having network interfacing in the back where you can bring everything in from ArtNet, SACN, all of those type things, as well as having five pin DMX and wireless built on board, it really does have all of the functionality you've come to inspect for something that says Maverick on it. So let's go through some of the different feature sets of the fixture. As I mentioned, everything in the fixture, not just the LED engine, is meant to be completely silent. So all of the internal components, even the pan and tilt, is meant to be virtually silent and not be heard. As you can not hear from the pan and tilt settings we have here, it's very smooth in its operation as well as very quiet. So now let's talk a little bit about the actual LED engine itself. It is a native 6500K uh, color temperature uh, native out of the end of the lamp, but we've taken a lot of strides in the color mixing to really dial in those colors. So here's an example of a true 3200 color temperature, being able to dial that in consistently and really follow all the, the uh, true color temperature across the color spectrum. Uh, it does have a full CTO, which allows you to do a wide range, everything from 2000K all the way up to uh, about uh, 8000K. And then we've really spent a lot of time into the actual color mixing flags. The beauty about when you create or design your own color or your own LED engine is that then you can really control and create and design your own color mixing flags as well. So we've really taken a lot of time to really enhance to get both those really nice saturated colors as well as really ideal pastel colors all the way across the range. So here's an example of those. That's our cyan flag. Here's the magenta, really nice deep saturated look. The yellow, which I'm really happy with. Again, another part of that is being able to crossfade really well between the color mixing systems. A lot of other fixtures you, you've probably seen has some tearing or have some sort of uh, weird artifacting going on as you color mix through the system. What we're able to actually do is crossfade incredibly well, especially from a, a lighter type of look to white. So here's an example of that going from cyan to then a white color, you can see it's very smooth and very even how it goes across the, the entire range. It also allows you to do some really nice color mixing into more pastels such as a pale pink. Here's a mixed red, which we're really happy with this red. It's a real red, not raw orange, which you might see in a lot of other color mixing fixtures. In fact, it actually looks like that's part of the color wheel. We're, we're extremely happy with the way that red comes out. Here's a mixed green. We have a mixed blue. And then we really tried to enhance on some of the colors that you're used to in the market today, such as like a, a Roscoe R51, being able to uh, manipulate that, or here's an example of an R59, and really enhance it, or really getting to those enhanced colors and really being able to mimic where they fall on the color spectrum. We're excited by that. 
So going into some of the other components inside, it does have a color wheel. So it has a five position color wheel that has the normal type of colors that you would come to expect. More of your primary colors uh, that are usually in there. So five colors there. And the other thing that we've tried to do is really enhance some of the optical usage of those colors. So it does split colors really well. So here's an example of what that looks like. And this is a very useful effect. Uh, some designers like to use this, especially with atmospherics or just like to texturize a set or with gobos. Being able to really put in a split color and manipulate it that way makes for a really nice usage of that. Another key feature that we've done is, all, all going with the quality of light, is not only do we have the native 6500 uh, Kelvin LED engine, but we placed a 60 watt LED in the center, which is RGBW. What that allows us to do is basically go plus and minus green of the color temperature to really dial that in for such settings as camera. So if you're in a house of worship setting or in a theater setting with IMAG situation, you may need to dial plus or minus green in a way, and instead of having to rely on the color mixing flags, you can actually utilize that 60 watt LED in the middle of the engine to do both different ways. I know this is a little bit hard to see on camera, but if I take in my native 3200K that I've got here mixed, I can go plus green just by manipulating uh, the LED chip, or I can go minus green doing the same thing. And then here I go back to 3200K. Much more of a feature to see in person and of course much better to see on camera, but it is very a unique feature to this particular fixture and one that hasn't been duplicated in the market today. We're very proud of that. Another thing that we've really tried to enhance upon is something that a lot of people use or you've seen in a lot of fixtures lately, which is called redshift. And so what that actually is, is having the ability to almost simulate tungsten going down when you dim. So here's an example of redshift both down and up, as you see. And what we've done a little bit different in the Maverick 2 Silence profile is really enhance sort of the optics in terms of the brains of the unit to be able to know where it is in that system and then correlate to how it does the redshifts. For example, the normal redshifts, if I'm going from white down, will utilize the uh, CTO flag to do that redshift down. Well, if I happen to already be in a color that has CTO or say magenta, it will actually utilize the 60 watt LED that I told you on the LED engine to do that. Or if you're in a very obscure color with a little bit of cyan and something else, it will actually use a different flag to do that color shift down. So there's a lot of information and a lot of smart that is going on inside the fixture to actually do the redshift whatever way you're going for. So here's another example, uh, sitting in open white, and now I'm gonna redshift down. So that was right from white, so you can sort of see that tungsten fall off in the end, both coming out and going back in. So let's say that I'm sitting in, in light cyan. So before I used the CTO flag to do that redshift, but now I may be in a situation where it's gonna be better if the light actually knows that it's sitting in this color to use sort of the LED engine or use the 60 watt LED on the LED engine to help do that redshift down and up. So it's incredibly smart and definitely the most unique way of doing redshift that's ever been done in a moving head. The next part that we really spent a lot of time in doing was really enhancing the dimming. Of course, if you're going to have a fixture that is meant for these different markets for quietness and all about the quality of light, it has to have precise dimming. A lot of other LED fixtures that you probably noticed, especially when you're dealing with cooling and those sorts of things, really have a weird steppiness and a fall off in the final 10% of like a dimming curve. So I'm gonna do a few exercises where I'm gonna do a series of dimming in a variety of seconds so you can really see how we've enhanced the dimming quality of this fixture. So this is sitting in open white. I'm gonna dim over about 10 seconds starting now. So very smooth transition. Now I'm gonna come back up in 10 seconds, starting now. So you don't get any pop on, you don't get any of that weird, you know, especially in that lower five, 10% of, of jumping back on and off or, or kind of tearing back down. But now I'm gonna take it even a step further. I'm gonna start from the open white. I'm gonna go down in 30 seconds, starting now.
really is quite good how it goes out, especially across the entire range. Now I'm gonna do the same exercise, going back up in 30 seconds from zero, starting now. So as you can see, that's often in a very difficult uh, sort of exercise to do with a lot of other fixtures on the market, just trying to get through those lower bottom halves of the dimming type curve. We feel that we've really achieved that, and that's very important, especially as it goes to in more of these theatrical type settings where those really are key to mimic, especially uh, a tungsten rig or a lot of other elements uh, going on. So one last exercise that I'm gonna do, I talked a lot about that lower 10%, so now I'm gonna dim it down to 10%. So this will be the fixture sitting in just 10% of output, and now I'm going to do the same exercise where I'm going to dim it over 10 seconds from 10%, starting now. So hopefully you can see that on video, going back up now in 10 seconds, that usually not only was I at a very hard part to dim from in a fixture at that 10% output, but then going through that entire range even at a slower rate is often difficult to do. We're very proud of the way that it turned out. So that is the color mixing system as well as the LED system. Now I'm gonna go into some of the components such as the, the visual effects. Um, and let's start talking about some of the gobos. Uh, as you can probably imagine, an enormous amount of time is spent trying to pick gobos for a fixture, but we felt that we've done pretty well. And again, keeping in homogenized of what I was talking about, uh, with the fixture being silent and the quality of operation, we've really put that into all the effects as well. So this is the rotating gobo wheel that I'm going to show you now. Um, one thing that I want to stop and notice here is this gobo is actually rotating. And I show you this because we've taken all of the time to really enhance all of the, the physical components as well, including rotation. So you can really do those fine-tuned type of um, gobo rotations, whether whatever kind of theatrical sort of setting that you're going for, you can do that nice, smooth, and without any shaking of the gobo. So this is the rotating gobo set. As you can see, it's some nice uh, patterns, makes for some great breakups, especially you, when you utilize them with different components such as the prism um, and the different elements there. There are five rotating gobos. We also have the gobo shake, and I know that some people don't like the shake, but some people do, and it's actually, especially when you can do it smoothly like this, a feature that you can actually use as a very nice effect. Some designers like to use it in a theatrical setting with like a leaf gobo, so you can mimic wind blowing or, or that sort of thing on stage. Being able to have it a smooth function without a lot of shake really allows you to utilize that effect in, a, in an effective manner. So it does have six rotating gobos then it does have a static wheel. And I'd like to stop right here and tell you another design choice that we made, but all of the gobo holders are exactly the same. So we've gone with one gobo holder. So no matter if you want, if you like a gobo on the rotating gobo set and you wanna put that on the static wheel, you can simply take that gobo holder out and put in that wheel. So you don't have to fumble around with having different holders between the two wheels. We make that easy so you can actually keep some different ones on the shelf or if you're a production company, maybe do a gobo lo load much quicker and easier. So again, six rotating gobos. This is the static wheel set. So you can see some more breakup patterns, more of some leaf breakups, and some nice linear stuff, especially when you're utilizing some other things where you need to texturize a set or you need to uh, spread it across the, the stage deck. This really makes a, a nice enhancement and it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice perfect loadout for that sort of thing. So six rotating, uh, eight static. It does have a really nice zoom range, which is incredibly smooth and again, quiet from about five to 50 degrees. And that's a real usable five to 50 degrees. So you can have a gobo in focus from the extreme end of it all the way to the extreme out and vice versa and stay in focus throughout, throughout the entire range. It does have a nice animation wheel, and this is what allows you to do those different effects as you start layering different gobo components on, so I can do water type effects as I utilize color and different gobos, and then how you utilize the focus from there really allow you to manipulate those. 
Uh, it does have a nice frost. And one thing that we've done here is we did a lot of market research and some fixtures in this category, you'll see that they may have a light frost or they may have a heavy frost. Well, what we wanted to do, since there's such a broad range of ideas and opinions out there on frost, is make a true variable frost. And that's often easier said than done because you have to do a lot of optical type of things inside plus have space to make that happen. But we feel that we've really been able to achieve that quite well. So here's a gobo and here's what it looks like with full frost in. And we chose that degree because even with the full frost, you still keep the integrity of the gobo, but just still have that nice fuzzed look, which really works well, especially when you're utilizing the, the framing shutters uh, as well as some other components as well. So here is the frost in, in an open setting. So you can see it just sort of takes the hard edge off. So if you needed to utilize that in that pseudo wash type of element to turn it into that wash, wash type effect, you can utilize that by having a full frost. But again, you do get a completely variable in, so you can go as light as you want or as heavy as you want and have variations in between instead of having to put that entire thing in or out and you live with what you have. So now we'll get into another nice component and usually something that's incredibly loud in a fixture is the framing shutter module. And we feel like we've done a really nice job in. This is a four point system, so four blades. You do have plus and minus 60 degree rotation uh, per blade, as well as about 20 degrees on each blade to be able to really manipulate how you want. So here's an example of that. Obviously 60 degrees one way, 60 degrees the other way. And the nice thing about it is you can wipe from any blade to black. So this is a nice design element. Some designers like to be able to do quick blackouts and do that with the framing shutters. You can do it from any point in this four point system. What's also nice is optically, we've really enhanced that to be able to utilize how you should with, with a gobo and that, because you might be you know, doing uh, textures on a set piece or you may be able to frame out a screen or that sort of thing with a gobo. You really need to be able to focus not on the gobo, but on the framing shutters as well. And here's an example of that, where you still see the framing shutter on the outside, but it's fuzzed out enough that it's not you know, uh, conflicting to whatever the overall look is. Here's what it looks like with a frost. So again, the variable frost really allows you to get the look of the framing shutters, whatever you're trying to frame out on your stage. It does have an iris. And it has a really nice prism. We've gone with a five facet prism. And the reason I like the five facet prism, especially in a fixture like this, and especially in a theatrical type of setting, it really allows you to stack gobos quite well across your stage. So instead of you having hot spots like you, do, you get with some prisms, this one really allows you to blanket however you're looking and keep the output. As you can see, normally with a lot of other type of LED engines, you might have some fall off in different places of the gobo. Well, because of the incredible flat field of this fixture, you have the same intensity virtually through the entire range, which is quite nice. Last but certainly not least, uh, and something that may not show up translate great on video, but is uh, our virtual strobe. This is a great effect, and this happens only off the LED engine. This isn't a moving part whatsoever. So what we've done is by take, utilizing the LED engine, we're able to put different drivers across, and, and this is an, a channel that's actually built into the console or into the fixture, the profile, where you actually can call up, you can change that speed, you can change the type of look, and just by manipulating, running through the different uh, sections of the LED engine, can get almost a three-dimensional look on a wall when you utilize a gobo such as this. So that's one uh, look that we call stop motion. Then you have more of a, you know, this could be used for a dream sequence or some sort of really nice slow transition between. Or you can utilize it with the prism and almost look like a totally different effect whatsoever. And that is just manipulating the control channel of the actual LED engine. Or you can get as crazy as doing something like this. This is a prism with the gobo and doing a split color. And you can almost see that I'm doing a three dimensional effect by just circling through there, which almost looks like it's some sort of a moving gobo on the inside. And then last but certainly last, not least, uh, virtual strobe. And the reason I bring up the strobe is not only does it do a very nice strobe in terms of the LED engine, but remember, we are convection cooling this fixture. It doesn't have a fan in it. But when it's strobing, it's not on as full. So we actually crank up the horsepower in the strobe. We don't have to limit the strobe back. So instead of that having that native output, when you're strobing, you're actually getting a little more, bit more output. So your actual strobe is gonna be brighter than the native light output is. 
So that is the Maverick Silence 2 profile. We're extremely happy with the way that's come out. And again, it's ideal for any situation where you need a quality of light type fixture as well as silent operation. The Maverick 2 Silence profile can't be beat. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit like and subscribe and follow us on social media. And we look forward to making your event brighter.